Hey everybody, Box Book coming at you again today. I got my three Vin Ventners with me, Stripe Vin Ventner. I say they're Stripe Vin Ventner, but there's an X to them, and the reason why there's an X is because in their background, there is an unknown jungle on the father's side. So I won't sit there and say they're pure Vin Ventners because that would, I, I don't want to misrepresent something. Um, the cool thing about these guys is they all have stripes, which I absolutely love. Um, the reason why they're not super gold, um, Shadow here has some really decent yellows, but they got ivory in their background, and, um, so that's really cool. So that's going to help further other projects they want to do. They're not ivory themselves, but they do. They kind of got that cream-looking yellow to them. Um, they got nice, clean, cream sides. Um, but the cool thing about these Van Vettners is the blacks are solid black, and I absolutely love that. But my favorite thing is obviously the stripes. But that ain't what I want to talk to you about today. What I want to talk to you today about is, you know, not giving up, you know, when it comes to breeding. I, I get asked this a lot. You know, I get, I get DMs and I get PMs this, you know, about breeding. Like, what's your secret? You know, how is it you were able to breed boas and, and then you got your carpet pythons and, and you maternally incubated your carpet python. How did you do that for your first carpet python? And, and the, it's, it's the, you know, honestly, I got a lot of help from guys and stuff like that. But you know, I get asked, what's the secret? And honestly, there is no secret. I mean, obviously, you, you know, you got to know your basic setups. You know, you got to know the temperatures. You got to know, you got to make sure the weight's right. You got to feed them right. You got to care for them right. You know, there's all that. But the, the truth of it is, um, you just can't give up. You know, so many people get into these snakes and things go wrong. And they get frustrated and, and, and they lose their determination because they're like, nothing's going right oh this was supposed to do this this was supposed to breed that you know this locked up but i didn't get any eggs this female got eggs and then she got egg bound and died or you know just so many things can happen and from the time they're babies to the time they're ready to breed to the time you get eggs or live depending on what you're breeding you know so many things can happen in your life that will deter you from continuing to follow your dream um, something that just happened to me and, and you guys know I, I share everything with you guys so that way there's no secrets you know what you see from me is, is what you get I try to keep I try to be as open as possible in my videos so that way you guys know when I talk to you I'm talking the truth you know I had you guys know I had a, a Fudo jungle that I got from J. Rod Manley and he was a gorgeous boy premium jungle um, just awesome well, he got an R.I. I gave him an injection. Um, he got better. I mean, the next day after his first injection, I mean, it was. I mean, he looked looked completely different. I mean, just totally, just boom. You could tell that medicine was working. And so I was thinking, okay, great. You're gonna you're gonna turn this corner. No big deal. You know, two days later, I give him as well. The the next day, you know, I don't give him injection. I give him every other day for two weeks. You know, even if they clear up, just to make sure it's gone. I gave him his, his second injection, and even on the second injection, when I, I had him in quarantine at this point, when I opened up his enclosure, he was ready to go. He's ready. To, he was looking for food. He's, he was a very friendly snake. Um, I say this, he was because he did pass away, but he was definitely thinking I was going to feed him. So I knew he was feeling better, you know, because if they're sick and they got that, they want they don't want to eat. And so he was already letting me know he was on the hunt for food. Um, and that was what what time did we give him that injection around what 11 30 priest yeah at night i gave him a second injection um we checked on him. what time did we check on him that night was it two or what time was it was it 1 30 about 1 30. okay so it was about 1 30 in in the evening when i checked on him after the second injection so you know i check on my snakes constantly you know during the day during the night morning i mean i'm always checking on my snakes i'm always worried about them i'm always watching them um but, you know, so I went to bed, I don't know, I probably went to bed that morning around 3 or 4 in the morning. Um, got up, you know, was talking to priests, like, okay, you know, we got this to do today, this to do today with the snakes. And we're just, you know, talking about stuff we need to do today. I talked to my buddy on the phone, and we're talking, I was talking about, yeah, he's definitely getting better. He, you know, last night he was looking for food. It, you know, I gave him a second injection. I mean, it, he was, you know, I was, I was sure it was all good. Guess what? 10 o'clock that morning, I go down there and he looked like he was, I go down into the, not into the sink room, but downstairs in the quarantine room. And he was just laying there and it looked like he was just laying there. And I kind of looked at the priest and I'm like, that's kind of odd how he's laying. He's not, 
you know, and what I mean by odd is just his tail was curled up a little tighter than he normally has it. And so I opened his cage because I was going to check him out, just examine him, make sure he was doing better, and I realized he was dead. Now he was soft, you know, Rigor Morris hadn't kicked in or anything like that. He wasn't in no death curl or anything like that. And the day before he did poop and pee, you know, so he was, and I did see him drinking. So he was definitely on the way better. And that just goes to show you that sometimes, you know, things are just out of your control and he passed away. And, you know, you're going to have that, you know, and that's when people get frustrated. You know, they, they, they buy the snake, or they spend all this money on a snake, um, or don't even have to be that expensive. But, you know, you have, if you don't have a big collection, well, it doesn't matter if you have a big collection or a small collection, but you feel it more when you have a smaller collection. You know, if you say you have 10 or 20 snakes, you're definitely going to feel every death a lot more than you would if you have, you know, or, you know upwards of 50 or more. Um, but, you know, that would have been a real turning point for me to where I could have said, man, this sucks. This, and I was, I was frustrated, I was mad, but it wasn't, I wasn't so mad that I wanted to give up. I didn't want to quit doing what I was doing. And that's the secret to breeding right there, is not quitting, not giving up. That's the hardest thing for people because so much can go wrong. You know, you can do everything right and you can have lockups galore. You can have all the signs that you're gonna have babies and then nothing. And people get very frustrated with that. Oh, my male, you know, is gay or oh, my female just won't lay eggs or um, this male is not interested or, you know, this female died during birth. This female died while she was grabbed. This female got egg bound. Um, you know, so many things can happen, you know, not just that, but just life in general that can stop you from, from breeding your snakes. And I think that's the hardest thing for people. You know, that's, that's the secret to breeding is not giving up, not quitting. When things get hard, you got to push past them barriers. It's, it's like anything in life. You have to just put your mind, focus your mind. This is not going to stop me. I don't, I don't care what happens. I am going to make this happen. You are not going to stop me. And it's the same thing with breeding. Things are going to go wrong. Things are not going to go right. But the difference between success and failure is not quitting not giving up uh, a perfect example i'll actually do two examples um where you can get frustrated i'll do it i'll do these three snakes right here okay these three snakes if i can get them all undone yeah. these three snakes are all sips okay now this right here is cry now if you know she's got excellent weight she's not skinny by any means she's not anorexic but she's also not the size of her brother and sister and that's just because she's a picky eater. She'll go three months where she'll eat every other week and gimme, 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 gimme. And then she might go four or five months up to, she's went up to six months of where she don't want any food at all. So it's gonna take me a little bit longer to get her up to size. But, and you can see right here how she is. She's just a tiny little thing. This is Shadow, by the way. This is the father to the clutch I just had. And I just love the blacks of the blacks on this guy. He's actually trying to figure out what the camera is. But, you can you'll have snakes that do that um and that can be frustrating for people and people want to give up and say you know what this is just not worth it uh you know everyone else has an easy time with this everyone else has no problems with this and that's not true everybody struggles at some point in time with their collection um and you know this is a perfect example of, of one that just you know she hasn't taken off for me on food yet and that's okay i'm not going to give up on her i'm not going to quit i'm going to keep just plugging away at her and eventually She'll get up to size and she'll go. And if she doesn't, I don't care. I got an awesome pet. Um, you know, and so it's about not giving up. Not even when things are frustrating. And she is, trust me, she is a frustrating snake when it doesn't want to eat and people get discouraged. Um, another perfect example of that, I'm a, I'm a, he did a video not too long ago. Um, Godfather Exotics. Now you talk about a guy that had every reason to quit snakes and just to say forget it he had he told the story on his youtube and i'll leave a link to his youtube channel below so you can go to it i've done a shout out for him before but uh, um you know this is a guy that's just determined he did not quit he had um just a bad tough luck he had an excellent setup he had some spe spectacular ball pythons and he got a bad snow one year and he thought this place was he thought that where he had the snakes at was insulated it wasn't he didn't know it wasn't and, but the, what really happened was they lost power and the fuse to the generator blew. 
So he ended up losing his entire collection due to a fuse. You know, and here's a guy that could have quit and he didn't. He stuck with it. He, he's like, he just like, no. He had good friends, you know, that contact him, call him, said don't quit, don't give up, you know, don't, don't let this stop you. And now, years later, he's built his collection back up to just a spectacular collection. And he made something that he's been trying to do for 15 years. He finally did it was he made a leucistic ball python, a, a, a bell ball, ball, ball python. I believe that's the line of ball pythons he, he, he got the leucistic from. And that's just because he was determined he didn't quit. That's the secret to breeding, is not quitting, not giving up, not letting it in, no matter what is going in on your life. I mean, you'll have people all the time say, man, how, much, how many snakes do you have? How much money do you spend? You have that many snakes in your house? Uh, you know, how much is your electric bill? How much, how much is your food bill? How much, is your, how much did all them cages cost you? You paid that much for that snake? You know, you'll have all them external negative vibes and energy coming in at you, trying to stop you from doing what you're doing. You just have to block it out. You have to be singular-minded and focused not to quit. No matter what goes on, you have to stay focused. You have to stay determined. You have to push past them barriers. You know, you can't let those things stop you. You have to ignore it. And I'm going like this because, you know, I'm putting up my shields. You know, I don't let what other people say influence me and what I'm going to do. I'm not going to let someone else's negativity affect me. It's good. what that does to me. And, and when you have someone negative come at you, and you will have this, and I don't care if you're a breeder or not. When you have a snake, it's an exotic pet, you're going to have negativity push your direction. You know, whether it's you feed live, whether it's you feed frozen thaw, whether it's because you own snakes, whatever the reason, they just, you're going to have that. Ignore them, people. They don't mean nothing to you because it's not their life. They're not you. You're not them. So don't worry about what these external people say. And then when it comes to people in your community that might not agree with what you're doing or, or like, man, I really don't think you should cross that with that. Um, some people call them hybrids. I don't. A hybrid to me is a blood python to a carp python or blood to a boa. That I mean a blood to a boa. Blood to a ball. That's a hybrid. These, you know, when, I, when I'm talking about my, most of my carp pythons being crosses, those are crosses. They're not hybrids. You know, but that's a whole other topic. But even when you run into things like that, you got to ignore it. You got to do what you're going to do. You got to push past it. You got to say, you know what? That's fine. I'm going to do me. You do you. And I'm going to do what I like. You know, you see it in a lot of communities, too. Um, the negativity with, you know, people jealous of people's boas people jealous of people's ball pythons um, and you just have to ignore them people you know you can call them haters you can call them whatever you want but you have to ignore that external energy and and and, and just say you know fight me I'm gonna do what I like you know and that's the secret you know so that's that's kind of my rant for today that's kind of my topic for today you know don't give up no matter what no matter how frustrating things are no matter how bleak things look you know, no matter how much you think you're struggling, don't quit because that's the difference between success and not even failure because failure is a way to success because you got to fail at certain things to get better, to learn, to grow, to do more. You know, so, you know, when, so uh, failure, how would I say it? So don't quit. Quitting is the ultimate end game. It's when you quit trying is when you have truly given up you know so learn off your fellow years learn off your mistakes you know be determined be single-minded don't let things get in the way of stopping you from doing you and doing what you want to do you know that's the that's the secret to breeding determination not giving up so that's my rant for today anyway this is a box and boa you know obviously I got you know harlot and I got shadow and I got cry on me I absolutely love these guys so that's who's in my video obviously I got my cameraman in the background say hi priest hi <laughs> it's nice having him home from school because he does the camera and he does far better than I do um so anyway hopefully you guys like this video uh, please like click share and subscribe and as I always say if you have any questions or comments just please leave them down below and you know I will get back to you um so you guys have a good day this is Boxmo saying peace